that was really upsetting and pretty surprising to me. And I think from that day on, I changed my view. I thought really differently of the Iraqis. Coincidentally, those guys were killed about three weeks later because they were providing services for Americans by having an internet cafe for the GIs. I don't really care for Iraqis. I've never been one to really hate anybody. But when I was out there, I did say that I hated them. I don't trust them. I avoid them as much as I can. I know that that's bad because I know not all of them are like that, especially the ones here, you know? But unfortunately, it's what I've experienced. I mean, can you blame me? There was a time that I had, I had to shower, and this guy walks in and says, three minute showers. I kind of looked at him, peeped through the curtain, these like conics containers that they make like showers. They're not really showers, so I don't want you guys to think that, you know, uh, they're showers. But uh, um, to me, it's a shower. It's, it's, um, and uh, he says, uh, three minute showers. And I looked at him and I peeped through the curtain and I, I didn't pay him any mind. And I just kept on bathing because I had blood crusted in my nails, in my skin, in my hair, in flesh. I mean, you kind of learn to eat food like that. It's okay as long as the blood is dry. So I kept on showering and the guy comes back about five minutes later and he sticks his hand in and he says, three minute showers. I grabbed his hand through the curtain, ripped the curtain, put him in a reverse lock on his arm and, and put him against the shower. And I told him, you see my fingers? You see the stuff on the floor, that's blood. And he said, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Um, we, uh, we, we were usually working for about 72 hours at um, we, um, which is where I said the thing with the reservist, because that guy was a reservist, and he had just been out there, and he had, I think he was like a gunnery sergeant, and, uh, you know, he came, he had never left the wire, you know, and kind of big macho and stuff, and, you know, three minute shower thing, and so, um, uh, and everybody was looking at me and saying, leave him alone. Uh, the guy looked at me with fear in his eyes. Like he wasn't sure what I was going to do. I don't think I knew what I was going to do either. You have so much rage inside and so much, so much anxiety that you don't know how to release it. You try to release it in spurts so you don't blow up. But even those little spurts just kind of get to you. I finished showering and I'm pretty sure that that was the last time that he went ahead and tried to enforce that three minute shower. The family members of the individuals, all they know is that their son was killed in action. But unfortunately, I know how their son was killed. I know how their son looked. I know the last words their son said, and I have to live with that. I know if he was missing an eyeball. I know if his guts were hanging out. I know if he tried to make it. I know if he was fighting for his life or not. And maybe for the better, those things should be classified. Because I don't know if that's something that maybe the parents or family members would want to know. Maybe it's just better left said as killed in action. Sometimes smells remind me of the war. Sometimes I go shopping and I'm in the meat section and I look at meat and it reminds me of the flesh torn off the bodies. Sometimes I'm eating a chicken leg and if it's cooked or charcoal, it brings back memories of burnt skin, burnt flesh, burnt muscle from Iraq. Just how when you know you throw meat on the grill, that's the way bodies look when they're burnt up from bombs and from explosives or helicopter crashes. A lot of things remind me of it, like loud noises, you know, I watched the History Channel and Discovery Channel about World War II veterans and the Vietnam veterans when I was growing up. You'd always see Vietnam veterans on a train in New York City, and, you know, there's, I would see them on a train and uh, I, uh, you see them with signs saying, I'm a vet, help me out. But I had no idea what it meant to actually have been to war. It stiffens you, it hardens you, it almost feels like it's not happening. Everybody's thinking they just want to get home as soon as possible. I'm not going to say I lost my compassion, but I've lost my, you know, Adam and Eve lost their innocence when they ate the apple. There was no turning back. So like them, I think I lost my innocence after being in war. And that's, that's the conclusion of my um, section. I, I, um, I don't, like I said, I, I, I don't think I, I, I um, ironically enough, a lot of the guys that died were from Texas. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't know I was going to be moving here, you know. Um, but, you know, God, I, I guess works, <coughs> you know, works uh, in mysterious ways.
and um, and I'll share with you guys, you know, some I I um upon returning and and uh, coming out the hospital, I I was drinking quite a bit, like most of the soldiers do, and uh, I got into an accident where uh, I um, my wife's cousin passed away, and uh, and I had alcohol in my system. Uh, and uh, so I got hurt even more. Um, if uh, and I was drinking before I went to Iraq, you know, but um, I was sure drinking a lot more. Um, I I was blessed enough that they they continued to process my paperwork to medical retirement, but because um, I I could have gotten in trouble with the military also. And um, I, me and my wife bought a home here, and she flies for Continental. And uh, I, I pretty much said, well, my career is over because um, I'm probably going to go to prison for a very long time. And uh, so we bought a home here, and we were, I was flying back and forth to go to court. And uh, um, I did a year in prison in California. Um, I, I would have never thought that. Um, You know, I, I, I was in the medical field, you know, so it's kind of difficult um, when someone is lost and not in war. Um, and, uh, well, I don't drink anymore. I, I actually, I got about two years and about four months. I don't drink worse milk. I only have one working lung. So, you know, it's not much of, and I've had a lot of surgeries. I've been in and out of, in and out of hospitals. Um, you know, I, I couldn't walk for about a year. Um, you know, I, I always said I wanted to do 30 years in the military, maybe more. Um, and uh, <coughs> so um, I, I have another manuscript that I'm just, I guess, tweaking up to turn in to um, to the publishers, and that'll be entirely my story. Um, and. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, I'm sorry it, it was pretty blunt and stuff, you know, but yes, sir. I have to apologize that I didn't remember that I met you before until yeah. you said that uh, you had to pair it at the birthday party here. It's okay. I feel like I'm 100. <laughs> so, and, uh, you answered one of my questions uh, when you said living in Harlem somewhat prepared you <laughs> for that. And I salute you for your service. Thank you.